Two of the more common types of vertical curves um, are the type 1 crest curve and the type 3 sag curve. Now the type 1 crest curve has an entry grade that is positive and an exiting grade that is negative. And the curve, or the vertical curve, is concave down. The type 3 sag curve is where the entering grade is negative and the exiting grade is positive and the vertical curve for or that vertical curve is concave up. And the type 1 crest curves are sometimes called the sad face curves because the curve is concave down and looks like a sad face. And the type 3 sad curves are sometimes called the happy face curves because, well, they look like a smiling face, right? Um, I want to use this video to kind of talk about the characteristics of these types of curves and a formula that is very crucial um, in solving vertical curve problems. So let's let's just start a discussion off by talking about uh, simple symmetrical parabolic curves. Now I've already drawn out a curve here and as you can kind of tell this would be classified as a type 1 crest curve. The entering grade, grade 1, is positive and the exiting grade, grade 2, um, is negative. Right? And you can also tell because this is a concave down vertical curve, right? This would be a type 1 crest curve. Now the point where the entering tangent and the exiting tangent, uh, the entering tangent and the exiting tangent intersect, let me draw that in red, um, is called the point of vertical intersection or the PVI. And kind of on a side note, I want to make very clear that the location the location right underneath the PVI on the vertical curve, which would be this point right here, is not necessarily the highest point on a crest curve. Now, if it was a sag curve, um, that point right above the PVI would not necessarily mean that point is the lowest point on that curve. Okay, so don't, don't assume that the point on the curve right underneath the PVI for a crest curve is the highest point. We have another formula that we use to find the location of the highest or lowest point um, on a crest or sag curve, respectively. Right? Um, so, getting back to some of the characteristics, the offset of a vertical curve is the distance between uh, the entering tangent and any point along this vertical curve. That'd be called that would be called the offset, right? Distance from the tangent, the entering tangent, um, to any point on the curve uh, vertically in respect to uh, your axis, right? Now the start of a vertical curve is, some, is usually called uh, the beginning of vertical curve, this point right here, or the BVC, beginning of vertical curve, and the ending of a curve, ending of a vertical curve, is called the EVC end of vertical curve. Now the BVC is sometimes also uh, called the PVC or the point of vertical curvature and the EVC is sometimes um, sometimes called the PVT which is the point of vertical tangency. Alright, now the distance between BVC and PVI which is which is this distance right here, is L over 2, where the length of the curve from the BVC to the EVC is L. And the distance from PVI to EVC, oops, that's not drawn very, very well. This distance right here is also L over 2. Okay? So the length of the curve is the distance from BVC to EVC, distance from BVC to PVI is L over 2, and the distance from PVI to EVC is also L over 2. Now also another quick note, um, symmetrical vertical curves are not necessarily uh, symmetric about PVI. In other words, uh, the distance from, I'm sorry, the point here a distance L over 2 from BVC, that's not where vertical curves are symmetrical, not always. Um, the only thing symmetrical vertical curves mean is that 
this curve from BVC to EVC is one single curve. Okay, so asymmetrical curves, asymmetrical meaning non-symmetrical curves, are simply two or more symmetrical curves uh, joined together. Okay, so just remember that symmetrical vertical curves are not necessarily symmetrical at the distance um, L over 2. It just means that the curve here is one single curve, okay? And asymmetrical curves would be two or more symmetrical curves joined together. All right, so moving on, there's another parameter that we call x, and x is the distance um, from BVC to really any point along this vertical curve. Okay, so x could be from here to here, um, from here or from BVC to here, um, really any point, any point along this curve from BVC would be the distance x. And just a quick note that the lengths and the distances, the lengths which are in green, the x is the distance, um, are going to be in stations. Now you can do them in feet as well, but for most of the examples I'm going to show you, um, they'll be in stations. Okay, so just to kind of wrap up, vertical curves in geomatics or, or surveying are really based on parabolic functions. And the reason being is because they provide a lot more uh, smoother transitions between the entering and the exiting grades. And so in the next video, we'll look um, at an equation for parabolic curves and see how that equation relates to uh, the vertical curves we want to study. Alright, so see you then.